Last week, Great Scott used a power tool battery in his video. So the idea seems to be good. But I had to adapt my video which was already uploaded. So you will learn, in addition to the planned content, two differences between Great Scott and me. Stay tuned! Gritty YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent, with a new episode and fresh ideas around sensors and microcontrollers. Remember, if you subscribe, you will always sit in the first row. And maybe you consider checking my new second channel? A link is in the description. Necessity is the mother of invention. When I wanted to hunt the weather balloon hanging 10 meters above ground in the woods, I decided to use a soldering iron to burn its plastic cord and make the sensor box fall to the floor. The soldering iron had to be battery operated because it was mounted on a long pole. My battery operated irons work with voltages from 12 to 24 volts. The higher the voltage, the more power the iron can produce. For this balloon, I used this 4 cells battery. But for the future, I wanted to get more power. That was the start of this project. I remembered my 20 volts Parkside power tool batteries from Lidl. They have 5 cells and therefore at least 3.7 volts more than my old solution. Many other brands like Makita use similar power packs. And these Lidl batteries are also sold by Amazon. Looking at the pack, I saw a problem. How can I reliably connect my soldering iron to the battery? It only has these narrow slots. So I did what I always do in such a situation. I googled and quickly found this project which promises a solution. I just had to download the STL file and print it. Here it is. It perfectly fits the battery and even the lock mechanism works. An essential detail for a reliable connection. But I'm sure you ask yourself why I choose this color. Is it important? No, of course not. The simple reason is I bought it a few years ago for a particular project and, for obvious reasons, I never have used it since then. My strategy to use the oldest available PLA for projects where it does not matter led to this color. This is also the reason why the print quality is meager. PLA should not be kept for too long. Anyway, I deviate. And you for sure wait for the most important answer. How did I connect the power? Because my soldering irons use XT60 connectors, I decided to add one of those. Also because they are cheap and support high currents. The only disadvantage is that they sit very tight and are hard to disconnect. For the battery contacts, I used 1mm thick double-sided PCB material. 1.6mm would be too thick and will not enter the slots. It does not need to be double-sided because the battery has two contacts, by the way. You can also use thin copper or brass sheets. And for higher currents, this is probably better. Both materials, by the way, can be cut with a box cutter. Just pay attention that you do not cut into your finger. One small thing that can save you a lot of time. Remove this support before you print. It is not needed. Afterward, it won't be easy. You see, I still use the Simplify 3D splicer because I'm used to it and because it works. However, today I would no more spend the money and use the Prusa slicer. I soldered short wires to each of the contacts and the connector, checked polarity with an inserted battery and, as usual, added some hot glue. Now the thing was ready to rumble. One thing to consider when choosing your model is where the wires fit. Unfortunately, not all models take this into account, as we will later see. These battery packs have a significant flaw. They have no undervoltage protection, because this function is located in the power tool. This is wrong in my eyes and may be even illegal because all lithium batteries should be protected. 
but because I know it, I never use the batteries till the end. This is no problem because they last for a long time with our low power projects. If needed, you can add under voltage protection like this from another project. Now we could finish the video, but as always on this channel, we want more. I found other models, for example this one for a mobile power supply. Its maximum output voltage goes up to 19 volts if the battery is charged. This model consists of two parts, a slider and a case. Again, I used the lovely pink color for the print. Here we find another common problem if we want to print a ready-made model. It does not entirely fit my needs. The first flaw. As said before, I have no clue how to connect the contacts. The holes have no exit in the direction of the power supply. So I have to change that. If I had the original files, I easily could make the change. But STL files are not made for changes. Fortunately, a possibility exists. In Fusion 360, you can import an STL file. Then go to Mesh, Modify, Convert Mesh. If you select the body and hit OK, the color changes to gray and you can make your changes. In my case, I added the cavity behind the copper plates. Now I can fit the two cables. Assembled, the mobile power supply looks like that. I used this DPS 5005 power supply module because I had one. I leave you a link to a cheaper version which also should fit. One word about the free version of Fusion 360. Its limitations are minor for a maker and it is entirely usable for our projects. With the top part of the case, I have another problem. My switches are too small. So I add material to reduce the size of the opening. Now my small switch fits. Cool. We find many other projects for those Parkside batteries, like a portable audio amplifier or a soldering station. You also find adapters to fit the cheaper Lidl batteries to a Makita machine if you want to save money. By the way, I'm sure Lidl choose quality batteries because of their long warranty period. And even if you do not own a power tool, these packs are very cheap. The 5 cell pack costs less than 20 euros or 25 dollars. Less than 5 dollars per quality cell, including shipping and a 2 year warranty. Another important detail is that the newer packs with the marking B1 seem to offer load balancing. The older A1 models do not. I leave you a link to Julian Illet's video showing the differences. As promised, here are the two noticeable differences between Great Scott and me. The slogan of this channel always have been good enough for the purpose. Great Scott can use expensive Makita batteries while on this channel we stick to cheap Lidl batteries, which do the job. Great Scott loves a clean environment. I can live with some mess but need the action. Ask my wife who would be the better husband. A 3D printer is one of the best tools I have ever owned. It is often used and solves many problems in my lab. A lot of ready-made designs exist on the internet. Usually they use the STL file format which the slicer software can use. Most write-ups also contain pictures and other info for the project. Very handy. At least three platforms for 3D models exist. Thingiverse, Prusa Printers and Cults 3D. Yegi seems to be a meta search engine for 3D models. You find the links in the description. If a model does not fit your needs, you can change it using Fusion 360. Maybe other CAD tools have the same feature. We found models for Parkside batteries and built a mobile soldering station and a mobile power supply. Projects for mobile audio amplifiers, LED floodlights or adapters to connect the cheap Parkside batteries to Deluxe Makita or Devolt tools exist. One more thing. During my research I found this cool project. It is called Tiny E and consists of modules that can be connected by XT60 connectors. You also find a module for the Parkside batteries. 
and maybe you add your own module? This was all for today. As always, you find the relevant links in the description. I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. If true, please consider supporting the channel to secure its future existence. Thank you. Bye.